All right, the following Zoom session is being recorded and will appear later today on my YouTube channel, Math with Mayo. There are two different classes that may be observing this session. Therefore, when you participate in the Zoom meeting, if you do not wish for your picture or your name to be made public, please leave the video off and use an alias name. If you have questions during the meeting but do not wish to speak, email me at email at ybcc.edu and I'll respond as soon as I can. You're going to get so tired of hearing this message by the end of the quarter, but that, such is life. Okay, so. Are we back to the screens where on the right, you can see the thing I was reading and on the left, you can see the web assigned graph? Yes, yes. Thank, you. thank you. Okay. So now we're gonna look at section 4.5, which is graphing a system of linear inequalities. So basically we're gonna have two separate inequality statements. We're gonna graph both of them on the same grid and then the solution is gonna be where the two overlap. All right, so let's get going here. And let's see here. The first one we're gonna do, let's see. Come on, here we go. Two X plus Y is greater than or equal to three. Okay, so I'm going to look at the related equation, which is 2x plus y equals 3. I'm going to go ahead and find two ordered pairs. I'm going to go back to using x and y intercepts and see if that works okay. So if y is 0, I get 2x plus 0 equals 3 or 2x equals 3, or x equals 3 halves. Now, I could change 3 halves to 1 and a half, but recall in WebAssign, I can't use mixed numbers. 3 halves comes out exactly as 1.5, so I could use a decimal, but I'm just going to leave it as 3 halves, OK? My second point, I'm going to let x equal 0. So 2 times 0 plus y equals 3. 0 plus y equals 3 y equals three. So what I'm doing so far is exactly like what we were doing before, okay? So I'm gonna come over here and I'm gonna plot the point, let's see. Oh, look at my scale. It's the scale is things that are in, in uh, twos. You know what, let's, let's go, let's use this one because it's got scales in one just to make it easier for right now. Okay. So three halves would be like one and a half, zero. Hmm, why won't it let me graph? Oh, you know why it won't let me graph? I clicked on this, didn't I? Yeah, I didn't click on it, did I? So here we go. Now we go here, okay. Three halves, zero. Oh, but it didn't graph where I wanted it to. Zero, three, not a problem. I'm gonna come over here and make it three, have zero, zero, three, okay? Should it be a solid line or a dotted line? Well, it includes the equals part, right? In the original, so it's solid. Should it be over here or up here? Well, let's use zero, zero as a test point. So test point zero, zero. Again, the test point goes in the original statement two times zero plus zero greater than or equal to three, zero greater than or equal to three, that's false. So it's not the side including zero, zero. So it's gonna be over here, okay? So that's the solution to just the first linear inequality, okay? And I'm gonna make a little note here. I'm gonna put a little arrow that says, ah, Whenever I touch the screen, it goes on to the next thing, okay? And there's a reason for that. I'm gonna come back to it. Okay, now I'm gonna go in and change the color of the ink from red to black. And let's take a look at the second inequality. Let's see if I can find where I even got that original one. Uh, here we go. X minus two Y is less than or equal to negative one, okay? 
All right. So I'm going to do the same thing I just did with the red inequality. So that would be, let's see, the, the related equation would be x minus 2y equals negative 1. Let's find a couple of word pairs. I'm going to use the x and y intercepts and see if that works OK. If y is 0, I've got x minus 2 times 0 equals negative 1, x minus 0 equals negative 1, x equals negative 1. If x is 0, I've got 0 minus 2y equals negative 1, negative 2y equals negative 1. Divide both sides by negative 2y equals positive 1 half, because negative divided by negative is positive. All right. Is everybody following along OK so far? Yes. It's going a little fast, but yeah. OK, OK. Yes. So now I've got to put the black inequality on the same grid as the red inequality, OK? So I'm going to start over here. And I'm going to click on that till it turns blue. Negative 1, 0 is right there. 0, 1 half is right there, except it didn't graph it where I wanted to. It tends to go to the whole numbers. But let's see, negative 1, 0, 0, comma, 1 half. Okay. Now, this line two that I just graphed, I wish I could do these in two colors, but I haven't, I don't think there's a way to change the colors of them and make it easier to follow. Remember this, this one here, that's the red one. And this one I just graphed, that's the black one. Okay. Also notice when I put that on there, the fill part disappeared. Okay. Now, I need a test point for the black inequality. Let's go ahead and use 0, 0 again, because it's not on either one of the lines. OK, so let's see, 0, 0, putting it in here, we get 0 minus 2 times 0 less than or equal to negative 1, 0 minus 0, 0 less than or equal to negative 1. That is not true. So that's false. So for the black inequality, which is this one here, 0, 0 is not included. So it's on that side. OK. So over here, I'm going to make myself a note. And I'm going to say it's over there. In fact, here, let's do this. We'll put a line there. And then uh, let's see, we'll go back here and put a red line there. All right, so, so what's going on here, folks? OK. This is what it's going to be a little hard to, sh to show you all at once. So stay with me. If I lose you, let me know. The red inequality. That was this line, OK? And the fill was here and here, OK? That's, I, that little arrow reminded me. So it was above the red line, so to speak, OK? Now, the black inequality, it was here and here. So the question is, what region do they overlap in? If we've got these two regions, and then these two regions, wouldn't this one up here be the one that overlaps? So that would be the overall solution. Do you follow that? Anybody? No, I, I don't get it. OK. Let's focus on just the red inequality, OK? The red inequality was this. Uh, <laughs> was this line right here? OK. That was that first one we graphed. And with our test point failing, this was where we would graph the solution above the red line. I know it looks black, but that's from the red inequality. OK. You all right with that? 
Yeah. Okay, now let's take a look at the black inequality, which is this line, okay? We were gonna graph above it, which is here and here. All right? Okay. Now, I wanna know where the two overlapped. Well, if we've got these two for one of them and these two for the other one, they overlap here. Oh, okay, I get it. Okay, let me do one other thing to do with this. Let's go back up here and let's look at this situation, okay? Let's just say, because here I can show you, I can go in and use different colors. Let's say that one of the inequalities, and this is not, I'm not graphing the same one that I just did. I'm just making some stuff up here. Let's say that one of them was this, okay? And let's say that the other one was that. Okay, now this isn't exactly like the one that's on WebAssign, but it's roughly the same idea. Where do they overlap? Let me, let's go to a third color. Let's make the solution green. Because everybody knows if you mix black and red, you get green, right? Okay, maybe not. But so do you see what's going on there? Does that make sense? Yeah. But unfortunately, you can't do all of that in WebAssign. You can only, you can graph one, you can graph the other, and then you got to kind of remember where things are. And that's why I did this to remind me of what was going on over there. Okay? Okay. All right. Tell you what let's do. Let's come in and let's actually do, um, let's do this problem in WebAssign, all right? So let's see here. I'm gonna start with the black inequality and that's gonna be three X plus y is less than or equal to three. Okay, so that's this top one over here. I'm gonna look at the related equation, which is three x plus y equals three. I'm gonna make a table and find two ordered pairs. I'm gonna go ahead and use X and Y intercepts. The only time that's not gonna work is when I get a line going through the origin. And if that comes up, then I'll just pick a different value. If Y is zero, I get three X plus zero equals three. Three X equals three, X equals one. Okay. If X is zero, I get three times zero plus Y equals three. 0 plus y equals 3, y equals 3. So I now have two ordered pairs that I can use to graph. So I'm going to click on a solid line and going to go, oh, this one has a scale of two units. That's OK. We can live with that, but we got to pay attention. So 1, 0 would be right there. Oh, it let me do that. And zero, three would be right there. Let's make sure one, zero, and zero, three. So apparently it'll still let me graph integers. Is this line gonna be solid or dotted or solid or dashed, excuse me? Solid. Solid because it includes the equal to, right? All right, let's pick uh, zero, zero as a test point. Okay, so test point. Zero, 
zero. We're going to plug that into the original inequality. Three times zero plus zero less than or equal to three. Zero plus zero less than or equal to three. Zero less than or equal to three. That's true. So zero, zero is part of the solution. So we're going to fill there. So there's the solution to the first inequality, the one that I've got written in black over on the whiteboard screen, okay? So I'm gonna make a note to myself, I'm gonna draw a line, and I'm gonna say it's gonna be on that side of that first inequality. That's to remind me, so later on when I come back, I know where this thing is, this shaded area. Okay? Any questions so far? No. All right, so now, we're going to start over and we're going to use the second inequality and we'll do that one in red. And we've got 4x minus y greater than or equal to negative 10. Okay, we're going to look at the related equation. 4x minus y equals negative 10. I'm going to find two ordered pairs. Again, I don't have to use the x and y intercepts. It just seems easier to knock one of the terms out by using a variable that's zero. If y is zero, we get 4x minus zero equals negative 10. So 4x equals negative 10, divide by 4x equals negative 10 fourths, reduces down to negative five, whoops, halves. What did I do here? Oh, I wrote it in the wrong place, didn't I? My bad. Okay, let's see here. I need to erase that. I lost my focus and was looking at something else. Shame on me. Okay. Not negative five halves. All right. Now, second point, if x is zero, what's y? Four times zero minus y equals negative 10. Zero minus y equals negative 10. Negative y equals negative 10. Divide both sides by negative one because negative one is the coefficient of negative y. So y is 10. All right. We okay with that situation. So now I'm going to come over here and graph another line. Notice when I do that, it gets rid of the shading. Negative 5 halves 0. Okay. Negative 5 halves would be negative 2 and a half. So it's going to be right about there. But again, I'm going to correct it here in a minute. And then 0, 10. So line two is negative, so what do we got? Negative five halves, zero, and zero, 10. Okay, so here's line two. Now, is that solid or dashed? What's it gonna be, solid, solid. or dashed? Solid. Solid, right, because both inequalities include equal to. All right, now I can still use zero, zero as a test point. So test point zero, zero, I'm gonna put it into the original inequality, four times zero minus zero greater than or equal to negative 10, zero minus zero, zero greater than or equal to negative 10, that's true. Let's see now, which of these two lines is the red one? That was, uh, that was this one here, right? That's the red one. As I say, I wish there was a way to change the color of it on WebAssign, but if there is, I haven't figured it out. Truth is I haven't tried, but what, what can I say? Okay, so here, zero, zero is true. So for this line, we're gonna fill in that area, okay? So that means, for this line, for this line, it's gonna be 
below it to the right. Okay. So let's go back to this situation. All right. 3x plus y less than or equal to 3. That is this solid line here and everything below it to, to match what I've got right there. Okay. But this one, which is what? Uh, let's see here. This line, it's everything to the right, which is there and there. Okay. So where do those two overlap? Is it here? No, here, no, here, no. It's right there, isn't it? Do you see that that's where the two of them overlap? Yes. Is everybody clear on that? Because one of them was these two. The other was these two. What do they share? This one right here. And let's see if it says it's correct. Yay. Okay. You all right with that? Yeah. Any questions? All right. Let's go and do another one. Uh, let's see. I'm going to go back here and just wipe that out. And we'll do another one that's just out of the textbook, if you're wondering where I'm getting these problems that aren't in WebAssign. Okay. And let's see here. We'll go to black. And how about... Um, let's see here. Not this one. 3x plus 2y minus 12 greater than or equal to 0. OK? So we've got a linear inequality. It's greater than or equal to, since it includes equals to, I know that the line I'm going to draw is going to be a solid line, not a dashed line. But I'm going to I'm going to look at the related equation, which is 3x plus 2y minus 12 equals zero. Okay. And again, I'm going to use x and y intercepts because I'm just going to keep using those until they don't work, and then I'll try something else. So if y is zero, we get 3x plus 2 times zero minus 12 equals zero. 3x plus 0 minus 12 equals 0. 3x minus 12 equals 0. Add 12 to both sides. 3x equals 12. Divide by 3x equals 4. OK. We good to go on to the second point? All right, if x is 0, we get 3 times 0 plus 2y minus 12 equals 0. 0 plus 2y minus 12 equals 0. 2y minus 12 equals 0. Add 12 to both sides. 2y equals 12. Divide by 2y equals 6. So our first inequality. We're going to plot 4, 0, and 0, 6. OK, 4, 0, and 0, 6. Is it going to be dashed or solid? Solid. Solid. Good. solid. Why? Because it includes the equal to. OK, now. Is it going to be graphed shaded below or above? I'm going to use 0, 0 as a test point. And I'm going to plug it into the original inequality. 3 times 0 plus 2 times 0 minus 12 greater than or equal to 0. 
zero plus zero minus 12, greater than or equal to zero, negative 12. This is false, isn't it? So zero, zero is not a good test point. So we're gonna fill over here. And to remind me of that later, I'm gonna draw, ah, one of these days I'll learn how to not make it go forward. I'm gonna graph above it like that, okay? So we're halfway home on this problem. Any questions before we go on? No. I can see that poor planning on my part, I've used up two thirds of the screen. So hopefully I can still squeeze the red inequality in there. We'll see what happens. Okay, so we're gonna come here and change it to red. And where did I get this one from? Uh, there it is. Okay, so x less than negative two plus y, okay? The related equation would be x equals negative two plus y. I'm gonna use that to come up with my two ordered pairs. So if y is zero, and so I'm gonna do my calculations down here. If y is zero, I've got x equals negative two plus zero, x equals negative two. If x is zero, I've got zero equals negative two plus y. Add two to both sides, two equals y, okay? So now I've got my two ordered pairs, my two points for the red inequality. So over here, we're gonna go negative two, zero, and zero, two. Let's see here, negative two, zero, zero, two. Solid or dashed line? Dashed. Dashed, good, because it does not include the equals two part, okay? Test point, I'm gonna use zero, zero. So test point, zero, zero. I'm gonna plug that into my original. So zero less than negative two plus zero, zero less than negative two. Is that true or false? Is zero less than negative two? False. False. So that means for the dotted line, zero, zero is incorrect. So I would fill it over here, okay? So I'm gonna do this. One thing nice, when we've got one of them solid and one of them dotted, it's easier to identify which is which. So that's, that's a nice thing. Okay, so for the black inequality, it would be above the solid line. For the red inequality, it would be above the dotted or dashed line. So where do they overlap? Up here. Now, this problem is not the one that's written there. So I'm not gonna click on the submit answer because it'll say that it's wrong. But is everybody clear with what I did and how I got there? Yes. yes. Okay. So tonight's homework, you're gonna go into WebAssign and you've got section 3.7 and 4.5 to do, okay? I will be back tomorrow during uh, at what, uh, 10 o'clock or 10.05 for an office hour. So if you have questions and I, I will check my email throughout the day, but it's not like I sit here watching for it. So I might check it, uh, you know, this afternoon and then maybe check it this evening. I might, I might not. So if I don't get back to you right away, don't panic. Today, I'm actually gonna be mostly focusing on the people that still haven't gotten into WebAssign yet and haven't ordered their materials. So that's where I'm gonna be spending most of my time today. 
but we'll be back tomorrow for a, a office hour at 10.05. We'll be back for another class period at 11 o'clock. So I will see you then. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and stop the recording.